Welcome to Lesson 3. We're going to get to the root of why glazes craze, and I'll talk about thermal expansion, researching oxides and identifying material sources, reducing KNAO, substituting magnesia and lithia for other fluxes, adding silica, second-guessing insight, adding boron, frit oxide sourcing, and silica to alumina ratio. As already noted, you can learn more about crazing by clicking the reference database link on the digitalfire.com homepage, then Articles. This is a section on thermal expansion, and if you do an on-page search for the word crazing, you'll find more. There are many listings there in the Articles Glazes section. This one shows the best solution. There's also a very concise one in the troubleshooting section that explains what crazing is and how to fix it. Crazing occurs when a glaze has a higher thermal expansion than the body it is glued to. Most solids expand on heating and contract on cooling. If a glaze shrinks more than the wear during cooling in the kiln, it becomes stretched and seeks to relieve the stress by forming a network of cracks. While there are many band-aid approaches, the key to fixing crazing is the reduction of glaze thermal expansion or, of course, increasing body expansion. Insight can calculate an approximation of glaze expansion, as you can see here with the G1214Z recipe. This is a base mat very similar to the one developed in the last lesson. It is very important to realize that although a piece might not be crazed out of the kiln, the crack pattern can develop over time as it is repeatedly heated and cooled in use. So to test, you need to stress the piece thermally to accelerate time. You can do this using the boiling water ice water test. It is described in the test section in the Digital Fire Reference Library. People often suggest a simple silica addition to stop crazing, but alumina mats need low silica. Adding even a few percent can turn them glossy. Notice the SiO2 is at the minimum in the target formula to achieve the matte effect. Furthermore, mats are often not well melted. Silica is refractory. It will make this worse. Finally, large amounts of silica are required to dilute the expansion raising effect of relatively small amounts of oxides like K2O and Na2O. So we need a better solution or a solution of which it is a part. For my first approach to the problem, I've opened G1214Z into Recipe 1 and copied it to Recipe 2 using this button. I have set both recipes to calculate RO unity and I'm going to work on 2 and compare it with 1. Notice I have the Lessons Materials database selected as with other lessons. Take a look at the formula. CAO is very high compared to the limits. What limits? I have them open from the last lesson. Notice the title bar shows which one. Can I substitute some of the CAO for another fluxing oxide of similar character and lower expansion? Yes. Magnesia or MGO also mats middle fire glazes and has a much lower expansion. I'll double click the CAO oxide line in the formula list. The oxide dialog opens. Notice the expansion number. Now I'll click MGO in the list. Notice how much lower it is. I'll close the oxides dialog. To see which materials are sourcing the CAO, I have selected Detail Recipe Calculation from the Report Type menu in the File menu. This report shows how Insight calculates the chemistry. It has written it to this text file in the Insight folder in my Documents folder and ask the operating system to display it. In the Preferences dialog, you can configure Insight to ask your operating system to display reports in your web browser or in the system text editor. This window is narrowed so we can see the leftmost portion, but notice the CAO column. Clearly, wellastonite is supplying the major portion of the total. Wellastonite is calcium silicate. So why not source MGO from magnesium silicate, namely talc? I have chosen to edit materials from the utility menu. Enter talc here and press the Go button 
to search and I got three hits. I've selected Nitel Talc. Notice this talc is mainly MGO and SiO2 but also has some CaO. Talc also has an LOI like whiting but much lower and this can contribute to the formation of suspended microbubbles in the fired glaze. However this is a matte glaze so they won't be, vi they won't be as visible unless of course they break at the surface. I've clicked generic talc. Notice it only has MGO and SiO2 and no LOI specified. Of course such a theoretical material does not exist in nature. The best talcs approach this chemistry better however. You might question the selection of talc over a frit to source MGO but for demonstration purposes using a material like this focuses on the issues more clearly. We will leave the complexities of incorporating a frit for a later lesson. To incorporate some talc I've made sure recipe 2 is selected and changed the amount of wollastonite to 20. That reduces the CaO it contributes to make room for MGO. I've also checked this box to get the target to weave into the list better. It does not separate K2O and Na2O because they're so similar. Notice that I've checked the three decimal checkbox above the formula list. Most engineers argue that ceramic calculations are not nearly accurate enough for this and they're right. However some like to see three decimals to see how rounding was done to two. So I'll turn this back off. But first notice how much the B203, AL203 and SiO2 have increased as a result of the wollastonite reduction. I'm going to add talc one part at a time to drive these numbers back down. To do this I've clicked a blank line below the recipe and entered talc in the lookup blank and updated the line. Then I'll make sure the increment by field contains a 1 and start clicking the increment arrow and watch the B203 and AL203 amounts come down in formula 2. You might think that the CAO has not dropped much as a result of the loss of the wollastonite but stay tuned to see what happens. I kept clicking till the alumina and boron matched formula 1. This happened at 7 talc. Now the CAO and MGO total what the CAO alone was before. The addition of the MGO drove the CAO down because fluxes are retotaled to 1. The SiO2 was off a bit because wollastonite and talc don't have the same SiO2 content. I have clicked the silica line in the recipe and taken it down by one to match them back up. Take a look at the calculated items list. The expansion has dropped from about 7 to 6.6. This is a significant change. However before continuing I want to stress that matte glazes have tight limits on their chemistry and do not afford a lot of room to juggle things without losing their surface quality. The addition of MGO might affect stain colors also for example. For now I'm going to ignore that. MGO might also adversely affect melting so a strong flux might be needed to help. Lithia is really powerful melter and small amounts are often used for this purpose. I want to demonstrate something about it so I'm going to replace all of the MGO with it. I would not do this in practice since it would gloss the glaze but I want to show you something. To change the talc to lithium carbonate, I click the talc line in the recipe list and enter enough of the name in the lookup for Insight to recognize it. I've also emptied the label so Insight will change it also. Then I'll update the line. Something interesting happens. Seven parts of lithium carbonate supply 0.24 Li2O to the formula whereas seven parts of talc supplied only 0.16 MgO. Why is this? It's because 7 grams of lithium carbonate powder sources many more molecules of Li2O because they're a lot smaller. Remember formulas compare numbers of molecules. Let's look at the weight of Li2O in the oxides dialog. It's only 29.8 whereas CaO is 56.1 and MgO is 40.3. Amazingly lithium carbonate has a higher LOI than whiting or talc yet it supplies many more molecules per weight unit. You can learn more by clicking the info button here. 
This page explains that lithia is a very powerful melter and it can have a disproportionately large reducing effect on thermal expansion. Understanding this and how to fire it is actually the secret behind Corningware. Notice that even though I added considerable lithium, the calculated thermal expansion is only slightly lower. This is an example of when we need to second guess insight. The relationship between the amount of lithia and its effect on thermal expansion isn't linear, so it doesn't calculate as well. From personal experience, I would be confident that 5% is enough to fix the crazing problem. However, it will also affect fired visual character to a greater degree than other fluxes. To finish, I would need to reduce the amount of lithium to match up the boron, alumina, and silica. Let's look at another way to reduce thermal expansion. Boron is a low expansion and low melting glass. Its presence makes room for very low expansion, but refractory alumina and silica. I mentioned silica at the beginning of this lesson. Where do we get more boron? Insight provides a way to search for materials having a certain oxide. To start again, I'll copy recipe 1 to recipe 2. Notice the line label is still there. Insight left it there, but I'll delete it by clicking the Delete Line button. Then I'll select the FRIT 3124 recipe line for recipe 2, and click the Delete button to zero its amount. Notice again that it zeroed the line, but did not remove the name. This time, clicking the button again will not remove it, because the other recipe still has some of this. Now I'll select a blank line below the recipe. I'm going to determine the material for this line by opening the Materials dialog. I've selected B2O3 in the Having pop-up, and then I've clicked the FRIT 3195 line. Notice this has 23% boron. That is higher than the vast majority of boron FRITs, so this will be a good source of B2O3. FRITs are the best source of B2O3. The natural ones have LOI, consistency and solubility problems. Now I'll click the Update Recipe Line button. This will insert this material into the blank line I selected. The Materials dialog closed, and here it is. I have already also keyed 36 for the amount and updated. I click the FRIT line again since Insight moved the cursor down after the Update button. Notice that the B203 is up dramatically. The Illumina is also up. That's what I wanted. Extra B203 will make the glaze melt lower and increase its ability to tolerate high melting low expansion SiO2. But how much do I add? Another number that Insight calculates is useful. Look at the SIB AL line in the calculated items list. This is simply the total amount of SiO2 and B203 divided by the amount of Al203 or a ratio of glass formers to intermediates. If this ratio is maintained, the altered glaze is more likely to have the same degree of fired gloss. Testing will be needed to assess comparative melting, of course. Notice what I've done here. I selected the silica line in recipe 2 and clicked the increment button until the SIB alumina ratio numbers matched. It only took three parts of added silica. Notice that the calculated expansion is again reduced considerably. I can tell you from experience that this amount of added boron will melt more silica and alumina than I have added, so there's room to move the expansion lower using this technique. In most cases, you will find that the glazes most likely to craze are those having significant sodium and potassium and those lacking alumina and silica in comparison to limit formulas. Often glazes have both problems. The most effective method of reducing thermal expansion then is obviously reducing KNAO in favor of other fluxes, especially MGO, because it has the lowest expansion. Increasing boron to make room for more alumina and silica is also an effective approach. But think about this. All of the oxides I just talked about come in materials that contribute other oxides also. There is no way you could figure out how to juggle the recipe to affect the changes we have done without ceramic chemistry calculations. That is the end of this lesson.